Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dun- Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about um, my, I'm going to give you a progress update on me modeling out Andrew Yang's 2024 U.S. presidential run using Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition Strixhaven, my current Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition Strixhaven campaign, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you exactly how I placed Andrew Yang's number one policy into my Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign um, for my players and to create it as a point of action for every single one of my Dungeons & Dragons players, right? And to give them something to do in a way that it naturally interacts in the game while the game is still fun for the players. All right. So, uh, so I'm a huge Andrew fa- Andrew Yang ally. He's running for president in 2024. Our need for an actual, uh, courageous, and intelligent, and bold, and uh, healthy leader is greater than ever in America, right? And so that's why I'm I'm more on the Andrew Yang train for president than ever before. And I was very on the Andrew Yang train in, uh, you know, for the 2020 uh, election. And I weep every day that Joe Biden defeated Andrew Yang. And we as a nation are paying a price for not making the right choice on who should be president. And I'll tell you right now, there's no question in my mind that this world we live in would be a lot less sucky if Andrew Yang was our president, right? So, I care, you know, the number four thing in my life is Dungeons and Dragons. And so I'm using that to aid the person I want to aid most in U.S. politics, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm using my Dungeons and Dragons Strixhaven campaign specifically to model out uh, the Andrew Yang's 2024 U.S. presidential um, run. And I'm putting his policies into the game as action points for the players and seeing how they're interacting specifically to expose um, how voters are going, uh, voter reaction, right, voter response, and voter sentiment, and then and also to determine what um, what voter obstacles that Andrew Yang is likely to encounter, and then Andrew Yang is going to come right here to Philadelphia just like he did in 2020, and I'm going to give him all my data then. All right, so uh, to to specifically aid him. All right, so here's what, so the first thing I had to do was I had to take, I, I had to take Andrew Yang's number one policy, UBI, Universal Basic Income, and I had to place it into a Dungeons & Dragons Strixhaven campaign, okay? By the way, a Strixhaven, the Strixhaven campaign is um, a magical uh, university that is in the Dungeons & Dragons universe, right? So I brought my players in. Um, in session one, I did not mention any of the any of the Andrew Yang policies. And by the way, the players have no idea that these are Andrew Yang's policies being introduced into the story. And when I'm done telling you, you'll see how like they would have no clue that this was an Andrew Yang policy, uh, you know, discussion that's happening in the Dungeons and Dragons game. All right. So so basically, so UBI is the main policy, right? So. Strixhaven is is D and D Hogwarts, in my humble opinion, right? So Hogwarts is a school. You get your letter of acceptance, but with Strixhaven, you get your letter of acceptance, and they're like, "You've been accepted," right? Well, tuition ain't free. Tuition is eight hundred gold pieces a year, right? So here's what I did. All right, uh, session um, year one, I didn't mention uh, year one of the game, year one Strixhaven year one where the players are um, Strixhaven initiates, they're not aligned with one of the five colleges, the Swole Quip Colleges, the Silver Quill, the Witherbloom, the Quandrix, the Lorehold, the Prismari Colleges. They're not aligned. When year two came in, they all chose their colleges, right? So basically, they're on Witherbloom campus. They're not, and and by the way, my players, I have a Seder Lorehold Bard, year two, right? which makes them a Lord Hold Apprentice. So I have a Seder Bard Lord Hold Apprentice. And then I have a Vampire. Um, that's a whole question how a player gets to play a Vampire. That's, that's the whole thing. I'll, I'll spare you the details here. Um, so then I have a Vampire Wizard Quandrix Apprentice. And last, I have a um, specifically... Um, 
an elf artificer prismari apprentice okay so those are my three players right? my three player characters okay so they go over to Witherbloom, and none of them are Witherbloom. And there's uh, and uh, Bowen Tavern, which supplies all the food on on Strixhaven. And it's fantastic food. Is having a nice brunch for Strixhaven students. Well, about fifty Strixhaven students are having brunch, and my player characters are are walking past, and they're heading to Sedgemore Bayou. Okay, they have some business in Sedgemore Bayou. And Grayson Wildemere, who is a listed um, Silver Quill. A uh, star pupil in the in, in the Strixhaven book stands up and he slams his hand down. He's my non-player character, right? And he slams his hand down and he said, "You filthy Lee Copper! You get out! Uh, you leave this table immediately. There's an empty table over there. You go sit over there with no one because you don't belong with any of these apprentices or pledge mages. You filthy Lee Copper, right? And immediately, right?" Uh, my my <laughs> one of my players is one of the players out of character says what's a Lee Copper <laughs> right? like, and I'm like thank you very much right so I said so uh, the Silver Quill Dean of Radiance has been talking to the voice of the founders the founders of Strixhaven are dragons they have not been back to the school in over sixty years none of the dragons have even visited Strixhaven however they have huge um, dragon slayers in Strixhaven where all of their gold and their magic items that they don't have on their own personal body or in the area they're currently in, they all get magically teleported back to Strixhaven and only the voice of the founder, Taiva, which is in the Strixhaven book, has access to their gold, right? Um, but he has access to all their gold and all their magic items and can walk freely into any of their dragon lairs. The Dean of Radiance has been talking to the voice of the founder, right? And he has been saying each year, hey, and like 10 years ago, he established that the voice, of the, that the dragon's lair's gold would be used to pay for 10% of all students' tuitions that come into Strixhaven so that the deans could personally pick um, good candidates from any realm, no matter what their ability to pay. So universal base. And when they come in, all of their expenses are paid on a universal basic income. I didn't say that for the players. I was like, all of their expenses are paid. So their tuition is free and all of their expenses are paid. And they all have a tab at Fire Jolt Cafe. They all have a tab at Bowen's Tavern. And they all have a tab at the Biblioplex and get whatever they need, right? And there's no cap on what they can spend. Right, so, so it's you know so and and they live like kings, right? Like they they just get whatever they want, and everybody else has to deal with whatever their parents gave them, right? Or whoever's funding them to go to Silver Quill, right? And so what's happened is these 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 students that are brought in by Dean Radiance by the the Silver Quill Dean of Radiance's um, choice, right? Because and and every all the students that he picks with the other deans that come in on this free scholarship free full ride scholarship right um that is all paid for by the dragons so we so you have that right um and so these so what you so the term that people who are against this policy who are actually paying their tuition and actually have to pay their tab at the Fire Jolt Cafe and actually have to pay their tab at the Bowen's Tavern and actually have to pay for their books at, Bibli at the Biblioplex, right? They all, uh, some actually the rudest of them, have started to call these students who come on on the full ride scholarships Lee Coppers. Now, what on earth does that mean? It means that they believe if this practice continues then the only people that that then the only thing left in the dragon's lairs will be coppers only coppers will be left and for short they call them lee coppers they're like you are draining the dragon's hordes you are draining the dragon's hordes right and when the dragons come back it'll be empty cuz tiva spent all their money Right, and only coppers will be left at the, bo the bottom of their dragon lairs, and they'll be upset, and that's it. So, so of course, right? Uh, my player character. So here's what happened. One of my, the 
specifically the Elf Artificer Prismari Apprentice was like, heck to the no, and rolled up immediately on Grayson Wildermere and says, you need to apologize immediately. And here's what here's what happened. I said to the other players, I was like, are you going to help this Lee Copper, right? this student who's been called a Lee Copper? And, the, and one of the players was like, well, I, I have definite concerns about the, the Silver Quill Dean of Radiance's um, use of the dragon's coin. So I, I really don't support uh, the Lee Coppers. And, um, but that's my player character, you know, buddy there, and I support him. So I'm going to roll up right behind him and be like, uh, you know, and show that I'm backing him, right? And then the other player, right, um, he usually does what the, um, the, the vampire, so specifically the vampire wizard Quandrix Apprentice usually does what the satyr bard Lorehold Apprentice does, and in this case, he did exactly that. So one person was like, I support the Lee Coppers. And one person was like, I definitely don't support the Lee Coppers, but I support you, my teammate, right? And then the other person was like, I'll go along with you. And even there, I'm starting to see how votes are going to be cast, right? right? So this is how I put Andrew Yang's number one, um, number one policy into Dungeons and Dragons, made it fun, and gave and made it an action point. Thanks for letting me share this with you. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.